So if you want to create a game for Android, there are plenty of different ways you can go about it. Probably the most official way though, is to build the game yourself from scratch using Java in Android Studio. I'm going to go over how to create a very basic engine that will show a sprite that bounces around the screen. And from there you can build on that, create a game or any other project that you're interested in. Put on the kettle and let's give it a shot. Okay, so I'm going to assume for now that you've got Android Studio already installed. So go ahead, load that up, and you're going to create a new project. I called mine a 2D game. You can call yours whatever you want. But select an empty activity, because we don't need all that extra fluff, the uh, fab button, etc. All that extra UI just gets in the way when you're playing a game. So once you're in, we're going to make a few changes right away. First, you're going to change app compact activity to just activity. Now we're going to make the game full screen. You might be used to working with apps that use an XML script to define the layout and position of the views. We're not using one of those, so you're going to change the line that reads set content view to new game view brackets this. Okay, so what this is referring to is a class that we're going to build ourselves. Because 2D game development requires two things that you might not be familiar with yet. That's a thread and a canvas. So a thread is like a parallel fork in your program that can run at the same time. This allows you to do multiple tasks at once without slowing things down and without having to queue things up sequentially. So we can handle our game code and show our graphics whilst doing other stuff and with no slowdown. At the same time, the canvas is gonna be what we show our graphics on. So this is basically just much like a canvas in the real world. This is a surface that we can draw on. We can put bitmaps on, we can draw rectangles, all sorts of stuff. So we're going to create a class for each of those and the thread is going to run the canvas. Therefore, we're able to update the graphics without slowing anything down. The surface holder, the surface view is what will hold the canvas. You can think of that a little bit like an easel. Okay, and so with that in mind, we obviously need to create the new classes. We're going to start with the canvas or the surface view and we're going to call that game view. Okay, so right click on the app's package name in the window on the left and then choose new class. You're going to call this class a game view and where it says super class, enter android.view.surfaceView. This means you'll be inheriting the methods from the surface view. In other words, it means that our class will be able to do the same things it needs to be able to do in order to create a surface view. Surface view is the super class. Where it says interfaces, write android.view.surfaceHolder.callback. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. So every class has a constructor, and this is what builds the object that the class is designed to build. So this is the code that will build the view. By calling super, we are calling the super class, which if you recall is surface view, and callback allows us to intercept events. We're then going to override some of the methods from that class. This means that we're taking control of them, and so it's up to us what happens when they're called. We're going to leave those blank for now. Okay, so leave that to one side to simmer for a moment. Now we're going to create our other class, which is going to handle the thread. So right click and make that new class just like last time. This class is going to be called main thread, and it's going to have the super class of thread. So once again, we need to build a constructor. This one's just going to call super, which in this case refers to thread. So essentially this is like having a script to wash the dishes, and then all it does is call dishwasher, or a script to wash your clothes, and all it does is call wife. Uh-oh. I might be in trouble on that one. <laughs> the next part is a little more complicated. We're overriding a method called run, and this is where our main game loop is going to go. This loop repeats over and over, and on each cycle it'll lock the canvas, call a method to update the positions of the characters and elements, and then call a method to draw the new image. Those methods are in game view. We're going to be adding them in a moment. We need to lock the canvas before we can draw on it, because that prevents more than one thread from attempting to draw on it at the same time. The set running method sets our running boolean, which is a variable that can be either true or false, and therefore it tells the program if things are ready to go. We'll be handling that later too. The try and catch block is there to handle errors should they arise, and Java requires you to do this or it won't compile. Okay, so that's good so far. We now have a class that creates the surface, the canvas, and we have a class that creates the thread. 
only problem is that the thread has never started, so currently the program doesn't do anything. So we need to go back to game view class in order to kick things off. We're going to create a new instance of the thread in our constructor. Remember a class builds an object, so the line new main thread will build one new thread for us to run our game in. We're going to add code to start the thread in surface created, and then we're going to add code to stop the thread in surface destroyed. It can take multiple attempts to stop the thread, so we're adding a loop with a try catch block again. And just to save us time later on, I'm also adding an empty update method, which is where our calculations will go, and I've overridden the draw method, which is where we paint our graphics. And now the exciting part, you can actually run the game and see what you've built. So either plug in your device or set up an emulator and either way click play. It's pretty exciting. It's a blank screen, but it's a black screen of possibilities. Okay, so what we really want to do is obviously put some graphics into there. So that's what's coming next. Fortunately, that's quite easy. All we need to do is include some statements in the draw method in our game view in order to draw onto the canvas. This isn't the best way to do it though. It's not very memory efficient to be creating new objects in here and it's also not very well organized. So the much more effective way to do this would be to create separate classes to handle all the different objects in our game world. And this is also much more organized so that when you've got loads of things going on, on the screen, you don't have to read through reams of code to see what's happening. So that means, great news, we need another class. Okay, so let's start with a class called Character Sprite, and as you might have guessed, I'm going to use that to show our character on the screen. So create that new class and then add in this code. So this class basically just shows a bitmap, and we're going to pass that bitmap from game view. So likewise, you need to add this code to your game view class. I'm loading the bitmap from the resources, and I'm using an old character sprite from one of my previous games. This guy is called Bibu. I used to draw him on all my textbooks at school. You can, of course, use whatever image you'd like here, or you happen to have lying around. Okay, now hit play and you should have a bitmap on the screen. A little bit more impressive. Most of the best games though have some form of, of movement and that's often what makes them most enjoyable. Thankfully this is quite easy to add as well. We just need to put in our calculations into the update method. So we're going to add an update method to our character sprite class and this will be called from the update method in the game view class. We'll also swap out the fixed coordinates of our bitmap for variables, and then we can simply increase y over time to make our character move down the screen. Remember, x and y coordinates are measured from the left and then from the top. Okay, press play, and now your character will slowly move down the screen. Thrilling. Okay, so let's mix things up a bit. I'm not going to go into detail, but this code makes the sprite bounce around the corners of the screen, like those old Windows screensavers that were oddly hypnotizing. If you pause and read it through or grab it from the accompanying article, you'll see it's fairly logical. You can understand what it all does without me having to go into great depth. Click play and now you should have a sprite that bounces around the corners of the screen. So you can create all sorts of things this way. All you need to do is to put your calculations in the update method and your sprites and your other drawings in the draw method. Of course, at the moment, this isn't so much a game as it is just a sprite that moves around a screen. So if you wanted to make it more of a game, you probably want to involve player input of some sort. And thankfully that's pretty easy to handle too. All you need to do is override a method in the game view class called onTouchEvent. This allows you to grab the coordinates of where the user is touching the screen and from there you can do all sorts of things. You could have one of your sprites move towards that point, you could have it move away, or you could check to see if the user is touching a specific graphical element and then trigger an event there you go, you have the groundwork laid for a full game. Obviously this is all still quite basic, so if you check the article you'll see that I've delved a little into how to speed things up and optimise the process. I'll show you how to add an FPS count to your game and how you can cap the performance at a certain speed. So I hope you found this interesting guys. If you did, please consider leaving a like, it really helps us out. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments down below and I'll try and answer them. And like I said, check out the link in the description if you want the full article and tutorial that includes all of the code and all the step-by-step -step instructions. Whilst you're there, stick around for the news, reviews and features because of course we are your source for all things Android.